Venom is the latest rendition of the Spider-Man villain who previously appeared in Spider-Man 3. This time he gets a movie of his own, so let's talk about it. When investigative journalist Eddie Brock starts researching the notorious founder of the Life Foundation, he's exposed to an alien symbiote that enters his body. With the new symbiote, he gains new powers which he must use to stop the Life Foundation and its founder. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Sean Chandler and I started this channel because I was driving everyone around me crazy talking about movies way too much. If you can relate, you're probably in the right place and I'd love it if you'd join me down below in the comments section. Tell me your thoughts on the movie. Did you love it? Did you hate it? All of that fun stuff. Also, after this video, check out a video I put together a couple days ago with one of my buddies where we explain Venom inside of the comics and the source material, all that fun stuff. I think you'll love it. With that said, let's get started talking about the good. Probably the absolute best thing about this movie is the relationship between Eddie Brock and Venom. There's a lot of fun to be had inside of that because Eddie Brock doesn't know what's going on. He's not sure if he's going crazy. He's got all these strange new powers and then he starts having Venom interacting with him and Venom is kind of a lunatic. And so it makes for a really interesting, fun dynamic. There's lots of laugh out loud type moments. Venom is a very fun character to be around. So whenever he starts to show up in the script and in the movie, it's a ton of fun. Along those same lines, because Venom's kind of crazy and he's the hero of this story, the action is very exciting at times. There's a bunch of crazy things that kind of happen where he's throwing people around, using people as a baseball bat, and just kind of interesting stuff that's different from what we've seen before. We've seen some things similar with Spider-Man movies, but it has this extra twist to it because it is Venom, not Spider-Man. Another thing that makes the movie stand out a little bit is that it is a standalone story. It doesn't have a bunch of cameos from characters. It's not filled with Easter eggs. It's not establishing a universe. It doesn't do all the things that I love about the MCU, but it seems like all of the shared universes are trying to do. No, this is just a standalone story that's telling the story about Venom and these alien symbiotes and all of that fun stuff, and so then it kind of distinguishes itself in doing so. Likewise, Venom's not a hero. Venom is an anti-hero, and that makes for an interesting kind of twist on it. Eddie Brock's not setting out to save the universe. He's kind of just wrapped up in this big, gigantic adventure, and once again, that makes for an interesting twist on a superhero movie by having a hero that's not a superhero. From there, let's move on to the mixed aspects of the film. The big thing that comes to mind is Eddie Brock and Tom Hardy. I know a lot of people are praising Tom Hardy's performance in this movie as kind of elevating the material, and they're looking for something positive, and so they're picking Tom Hardy because they like Tom Hardy. And a lot of what he does in this movie is really good. Of course, he's a great actor. He goes all in for the part. And then there's other aspects of his performance that are just kind of weird, especially when they try and have him do sort of kind of comedic lines. There's a line in particular in an elevator where he does this E.T. joke that it's just cringeworthy. It's cringe inducing as if they were improv on set and then it accidentally made it into the movie. There's several different instances like that. And likewise, they, I think they gave him too much rope to try and do some weird stuff in some of the scenarios that he's in. And it, it doesn't all work. Likewise, Eddie Brock as a character is written in a very uneven fashion. Like they wasted the potential that they had there. There's something that happens in the first act of the movie that's very important for the rest of the film. And we're never really given a clear explanation for his motivation behind what he did, why he would do this particular thing, and it seemed like that was a setup for an arc throughout the rest of the story to kind of explore what drives him and why he does things, and they just kind of abandon it. So this thing that's really important not explored, just kind of happens, which is frustrating because in other parts of the movie, he's nuanced and he's torn between different angles, and there could have been this great arc in there that they didn't actually explore. From there, let's move on to the bad. And the first thing that comes to mind is the tone. This movie is all over the place. It starts off with a sequence that's kind of like a horror movie, and then it's kind of like a day in the life of Eddie Brock, and then there's some goofy jokes and humor in there. Then you have action sequences like the motorcycle chase, that has a bunch of really goofy moments inside of it, followed by very horrific type moments, and it just can't lock in on any one tone. It feels like each sequence and each scene is directed by a totally different person. Likewise, there's serious story issues with the script. The way it's structured, there's essentially the main A storyline with Eddie Brock and the Life Foundation, and then there's kind of this side B plotline that we keep cutting back to, and eventually the two merge into one main story 
storyline, but this leads to some serious kind of issues with the direction of the story as well as the timeline of the story and why certain things are lining up at different times. Questions that aren't really answered as to why an event didn't happen much sooner in the story's timeline. All of this things that should have been resolved in the script phase and then it just leads for a story that you're kind of like, what? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And even as you're going along the journey of the story, it takes way too long for Venom to actually show up. And so it just kind of feels like you're meandering through the life of Eddie Brock for an unusually large amount of time. And the reason that's a particularly big problem is that all of the side characters in this movie are really bland. There's almost nothing distinct about any of them. Like Michelle Williams' character, she's just the love interest that's with another guy. The other guy that she's with is kind of this stock trope for movie scripts where they just have the new boyfriend that's a good guy that's trying to help the ex-boyfriend. This has been used in many films before and that's just kind of the stock character that they put in here. Like if you've seen Nightcrawler, you know that Riz Ahmed is this great actor that can bring some interesting stuff to the screen and then his character in this is just so bland and generic as the eccentric billionaire that's doing illegal research. We've seen this character so many times before and there's just nothing new for him to do with the character. And also the special effects, once things do kick into high gear, are pretty spotty at times. Now certain aspects look really good and very interesting cool stuff with Venom and there's other things that were shockingly bad. Like at times it looked like all they did was fade out a symbiote to have it kind of dissolve into a person. In general this movie just feels like a big fumble. They handed the ball to a director that just could not cross the finish line and it feels kind of cobbled together whether the special effects, the story, the tone, the stuff that the director really needs to nail didn't work so well. Before I get my final rating, go ahead and tell me your thoughts down below. I'm very interested on this one because I know some people have had fun with it and a bunch of people have been trashing it, so we should have a nice, lively discussion. Also, after this video, remember to check out that video where I explain Venom inside of the comics. I think you'll really enjoy that one. As for me, I gotta give this one a C, but a six out of 10. It's pretty bad, but it's not wholly boring. Be sure to check out either that Venom video or my playlist of my best Spider-Man videos that I've done. Thank you guys so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.